Let's talk about the triple threat match. WrestleMania 40, night two on April 6, 2024 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm talking about Kevin Owens, Logan Paul, and Randy Orton for Logan Paul's United States Championship. Now, some of these uh, reviews I've been given sort of play-by-play, -play, not blow-by-blow, -blow, but, you know, some rough play-by-play. I don't really want to do it with this, not because it doesn't deserve it or not because I didn't like it, because I did. And you're talking to a guy, you're listening to a guy anyway, hopefully you are, <laughs> that doesn't love three ways, four ways, five ways. I don't like those kind of matches typically ever. Uh, I just prefer one against one, two against two, three against three, and that's about the extent of the numbers that I like. But man, was this good. It was just, it was, it was I don't know if it was the best three-way match I've ever seen, because I, I don't know. I don't really rank them in my head, because typically I don't care for them. But I, I like this so much, I think it has to be my favorite one, because most of them just don't jive with me this well. Logan Paul is the most amazing newcomer to wrestling I've ever seen. Before Logan Paul, Kurt Angle. I'm not comparing the two. I think Kurt Angle could tie Logan Paul in knots. But Logan Paul is moving along in a way that I have not seen Outside of Kurt Angle, except maybe for you Joshi fans who will know who I'm talking about here, Utami Heyashishita. I mean, he is just a prodigy. He has picked this up. And I'm not just a wrestling. The, the attitude, his ability to promo, his willingness to be this cowardly heel that is tough as he is, and he's legitimate tough, you can tell that. He, he's not afraid to use brass knuckles like he does and be the coward. Be the gimmick that, that people literally hate. I mean, wow, I, I'm impressed as hell as this guy. And who, I mean, who isn't impressed by Randy Orton and Kevin Owens? Uh, this match, they, they started off, you know, of course, Randy and Kevin rode the golf cart down. Everybody loved that. At first, it was Kevin sees the prime truck, goes in the back, gets a golf cart that he used on Monday Night Raw the week before. Or maybe it was SmackDown. I, I think it was SmackDown. And, um... Drives it backwards, puts it in reverse when Randy's music starts, picks him up, Randy stands on the back of it, they take off, Randy actually has to tell Kevin to slow down, you can see him, you watch that video, he's like, oh, 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 slow down, like he's flying down the ramp, uh, and all they needed was a wreck, and then both of them being out of the match instantly, but they weren't, they teamed up, they beat Logan Paul up, and that just lit the crowd on fire, they loved that, anytime someone's beating the Piss out of Logan Paul, the crowd is in their glory because this guy has legitimate, real heel heat. You understand what I'm saying? And if there's one thing you got to see about the Paul Levesque era, is that heels and baby faces are legit. I mean, this whole thing, the main event's based around major heel Roman Reigns and Rock versus major baby face Cody Rhodes and somewhat Seth Rollins. I mean, and this is major, major heel Logan Paul against baby faces Kevin Steen and Randy Orton. And all the matches are like this. You've got the heel and face element. The Usos had a heel and face element every match on here on both shows. Something that people said were, has gone away and you don't really do anymore is nonsense. And I think, I believe with all of my pee picking heart, that this heel and face dynamic being returned in such a legitimate big way is making a difference here. It's making a, you know, damage control, the big heels and I, facing the faces. I, I just love it. And this match was the epitome of it as well. Just some back and forth brawling outside the ring, inside the ring. Now, of course, in these three-way matches, somebody's always laying around selling, right? Kevin Owens probably sold more in this match than he sold in his whole career combined. Not really, but, you know, he's not a great seller. He's a good wrestler, but he's not a great seller. He sold a lot here. He, he laid around a lot. That's the big negativity and the psychology about three-way matches. But it worked in a lot of ways, especially when no, Logan Paul got the brass knuckles and started throwing fists with them and knocking guys out. Right? Knocked Randy a good one, although Randy did come to and kick out. Knocked Owens a good one, where he laid on the, the ramp for a good long while until he got up and tried to give the stunner to Orton only to get RKO'd. But look, everybody's... I don't know about everybody's, but I imagine a lot of people I loved when he went out and attacked uh, the the Prime Bottle guy. And I, I should have wrote his name down. He's some streamer that I don't know. High Speed or something they were calling him, I think. Weird. And uh, it felt like Randy legitimately hated this guy. 
and it added to it. I mean, he Randy's getting ready to punt Paul in the head, ready to do his old legend killer move, right? And right before he can do it, this high-speed guy in, in the prime bottle costume pulls Logan Paul out. Randy goes after him, and the guy mouths off to Randy, and, and Randy's like, I don't have a problem with you, but then he kicks him, boots him over, pulls that bottle costume off of him, throws him on the announce table, barks in his face, because that's what this guy has done to Randy. <laughs> I don't know what that was about, but seemed like a wacko. Randy did it back to him, and then gave him an RKO on the announce table, which didn't break. I don't know if it was supposed to or not, but that looked incredible, and it just looked and felt like Randy legitimately hated this guy. And to this guy's credit, he sold that move. He laid on that announce table for the rest of the match, including the celebration at the end. But his distraction was enough to lead to Logan Paul winning it again. Thankfully, you know, he had Randy to thank for that because Randy gives uh, Kevin Owens the RKO when Owens tries to give him a stunner. And Owens is laying outside the ring, or he's laying in the ring. Randy is outside the ring. Uh, gets tossed out. Logan Paul climbs the rope, does an incredible Eddie Guerrero style frog splash, and pins Kevin Owens one, two, three to retain the title. Now, I, I don't feel like I've talked enough to really do it justice, but at the same time, a lot of times when I do my videos, my goal is to not talk a ridiculous long time. And I know I've got some pretty long uh, reviews on these videos of this, but it's just amazing. This was another amazing show, another amazing match, I mean, on an amazing show. And that I just loved. And I don't like three ways. And, but I really love this. It just worked perfectly. Continuing to set up. Logan Paul is one of the biggest asshole heels of all time. And the enjoyment of seeing him chased and getting beaten down. And then he just squirms his way out of it some way. Even against a, a great one like Randy Orton. And a damn good one like Kevin Owens. Just terrific match. I, I feel like it really got the crowd up. Not that they've ever really been down this whole time, but really it, everything about this, the atmosphere, the look, the wrestling, just perfection, showing us that WWE is going to be wrestling done right. A sentence I never dreamed I would say in my entire life, but boy, are they something now? Are they wrestling done right as this match was, as WWE is, and I can't wait to see the rest of this. Great stuff.